Hey everybody, it's Travis speaking. Today I'd like to cover some new topics uh, relative to Autodesk and bring to your attention some of the new tools that you might see with the 2013 release. Uh, some of the bigger changes that have taken place with Autodesk 2013 release is Autodesk 360. And what Autodesk 360 allows you to do is use the power of Autodesk Cloud while you continue to work with your software. So right now, uh, what I'd like to take a look at is the cloud rendering and the difference between cloud rendering in 2012 and the 2013 release. But before we get started with that, I just want to take you over to the interface that you'll see for uh, the Autodesk accounts and your 360. So to create an Autodesk account, you want to come to accounts.autodesk.com and come down here where it says create an account. I've already got one created so I'm just going to log in and give you guys a brief tour. So once you log into your 360 account you'll see the profile information that you've set up when you registered and then when you scroll down you're going to see some of the options available to you with your 360 account. Now I have a subscription uh, enabled with my 360 account so you'll see that I have 25 gigabytes which is way more than I'll ever need but uh, if you have only a demo account and there's no subscription uh, that's fine you can still go ahead and use some of these tools but you won't quite have 25 gigabytes you'll have three which is still quite a significant amount of storage so we're gonna take a look at some of those aspects in the storage and collaboration tools with 360 in another video but uh, for today what I'd like to do is focus on 360 rendering so as you can see there's a couple other tools here um, that do require subscription but if you scroll down to the bottom you'll see that AutoCAD uh, web server and 360 mobile are free tools to you if you have a 360 account so if you ever want to take a look into into those you can come over to AutoCADWS.com and you could register here as well but if you start an account uh, with Autodesk this stuff will all kind of integrate in with your one account so we'll come back to the 360 rendering and because it's a separate site we're going to sign in again and again once you get your account it's going to be the same login for all of these different tools so now that we're into 360 rendering you can see some of the renders that I've done here in the past I'll just expand these out so you can see I've got quite a few in here and I've got a couple up here for the chateau so when you scroll over it you can you can click on your image and it'll expand and give you the full image size and if you scroll over this uh, drop down menu you'll also see some additional tools so I could re-render uh, using new settings I could render this room as a panorama which is a pretty powerful visualization tool and the fact that it takes your camera and it renders a 360 degree rotation around it um, giving you control almost like uh, a video game only you'd be standing still in one spot looking around um, you can hide your preview image you can download this to your hard drive you can delete this image to give you a little bit more space uh, you can adjust the exposure depending on your browser so if I click on this it's gonna say that I need uh, Google Chrome or Firefox I'm not gonna do any post editing with this today but I just wanted you to know that that is available as well so if you're rendered doesn't turn out exactly the way you want it to you can probably tweak it to the point where uh, you're you're happy with it so again if I click on this you can say show this view only and then it just isolates this view so as you can see you get some very very nice um, results here you can see with the shadows and the reflection so the cloud renderer does a really good job and it's a great tool to use with Revit because it allows you to run multiple renders at once while you're still able to uh, perform your modeling so if you want to keep working on your model while you're generating your renders this is totally possible now with uh, the advent of 360 so we'll come back over to Revit and this is the 2013 release so what you'll notice is a little bit different in how the cloud rendering is integrated into 2013. So if you come to the view tab, you'll notice that there are a few more options. 
If I come over to uh, Revit Architecture 2012 edition and I'm in that same view tab, you'll notice that I only have one render option, which brings up the render options for uh, rendering within Revit. So we might have all seen this before, but uh, a quick overview, you've got some different quality settings. You can change the size by zooming in and out. You'll see the pixels change. Uh, you can change your lighting scheme from interior to exterior, and then you have sun and artificial settings for both. Uh, you can change the amount of haze, adjust exposure. And something that a lot of people don't know about is that even with the renders inside of Revit, you can still adjust your exposure after the fact, which is a really nice, powerful technique because you might not achieve the exact result. So you can come in here, do those minor tweaks to the exposure or the shadows, and then you might have exactly what you want. So we're going to take a look in a little bit about how to get the Cloud Render into 2012 if you're still using that version. But for now, let's go back and get one started here in 2013. So I'm in 2013 now and I have a number of 3D views and I want to take this one and see what it results in in 360. So I'm going to come up to the top and as you'll notice I've already signed in. You can see my, my login here so I'm already accessing 360. So if I say render in cloud it's going to bring up a small dialog box that initiates the 360 rendering process. So right now, because I'm in 3D View 11, it's already asking me, is this the one you want to do? But I could select all of them, or select none of them, and just choose 3D View 11. I'm just going to uncheck the default, because this is the only one I want to work on today. So the output type, this is where you choose between an interactive panorama and a still image. We're going to stick with a still image. And the rendered quality, let's put it up to best, because I'd like you to see how fast this actually happens. The exposure I'm going to leave as advanced, image size, let's choose a medium, but something to uh, note is that the maximum size is 1520 by 2000 pixels with a high quality setting within Revit. This could take you a very long time to produce this image and on 360 this could take a matter of minutes to a few hours, whereas inside Revit it could be much longer than that. Uh, you can also choose the file format, so you can go with a PNG or a JPEG or a TIFF. I'm just going to choose JPEG for now. And then you can choose to have notification by email. I'm not going to really need that right now, so I'm going to uncheck it and I'll start rendering. So in the background, you're going to see um, this little loop turning. And if you look up at my registration, it's also turning here. So I'm just going to say continue in the background. And if we come back over to the cloud, I'll just minimize these. We should see another image show up here uh, shortly. So while this is working, I want to go back to 2012 and just take a little bit of a look at, at what we're going to see here. So I'm going to close down the render dialog. And where you're going to see the uh, render tool is in add-ins. But to get that add-in, you need to come back to 360, log in, and come over to the new rendering tab. And from here, you'll see a download rendering add-in. So what I'm going to do is, I've already got this downloaded, but I just wanted you to know where to find it. So when you come to the 360, you'll come right to this page. The first thing to do if you're a 2012 user is download the add-in. And since I've already got it here, I'm just going to double click on that and let it run. Now, something to pay attention to is if you don't have administrator rights on your computer, then you won't be able to do this. So in a school environment, just make sure you have permissions and you should be good to go. So I'm just going to get this started. This shouldn't take too, too long. But while it installs, let's go back to the 2012 version. So again, just as a quick overview for rendering, you can set up your render in Revit or use native settings from 360. So a lot of times people have the problem that they just want to go right to best settings and they want a very nice image. Well, you can achieve almost the best settings with a custom render setting 
and get a lot quicker return on your render. So I'm just going to come into custom view specific and go over some of the render settings. Let's take a quick look. As you can see, this is installing pretty quickly. So if I go to uh, the custom view specific and hit edit, it's going to bring up a nice, easy to use dialog box. This might be going a little bit slower just because of what's happening here with this install. So it's saying, please restart Revit to use the new software. So I'll close that. And after we're done this, we'll stop and, and we'll get it going again. But right now, uh, let's talk a little bit about render quality settings. So your image precision, this is, if anything, something that you're going to want to bump up a little bit higher. You're going to want this to be between 8 and 10 and this will give you the difference between this and this so if you're just gonna do a test render and you want to see how things are, are working out lighting then maybe put this down to two and then once you've done a number of tests and you're happy with the result you can bump this up and then get a little bit better quality image now your number of reflections you can see which is nice about this dialog box is it shows you uh, one end of the spectrum to the other so I find that reflections will slow you down and in reality your eye might only pick up one or two. So to keep this down about two to four is probably adequate. So this will also increase uh, render time significantly if this is up as high as you can bring it. This is way more than you would ever need. So if you want to emulate the human eye, you could go with four to six and that would be about as good as you'd ever need. Um, refractions is essentially what you see behind a uh, semi-opaque or translucent object. So as you can see here, how precise is that object behind that piece of glass or that transparent object. So I usually keep this relatively low as well. Maybe six is good enough. Um, and the blurred reflection precisions, because these are essentially side effects, I never really keep these too high. So I might put that at 4 and 4 and leave it at that. I will enable soft shadows. As you can see the difference between this one here, it's a very grainy rough shadow. And over here on the right, we have something that's very smooth. So what I'm going to do is bump that up to about 6. And then as far as indirect illumination precision, we'll keep these values relatively low as well. So we'll leave that at 2, at 2 and the bounces, we'll leave that at two. Now here is the difference between say an interior and an exterior view. Right now I don't have to worry about um, daylight portals because this is an exterior view. If I was taking an interior view like what we're going to be doing on the other one, then you'd want to pay attention to this. You'd want to have your windows and your doors and your curtain walls activated as daylight portals so that they'll actually act as a light source. So I'll uncheck these for the time being, I'll hit OK, and these settings would be great to get this render out. It would render quickly, and if I want, I can go back after and slowly increase the precision to get a better quality render. So for the time being, let's shut this down, and now that the add-in has been added, we'll simply load it back up. I'm just going to minimize this for the time being. And this is no longer spinning, so we should actually have a render in 360 at this point. So if I come back to the gallery, maybe there's a third one in here. So now if I click on this image, you'll be able to see that gallery, or that new addition to the gallery. So just wait. And you can see that's a pretty big image, so that might have taken quite quite a significant amount of time just with the application. Now I didn't do too much as far as uh, materials in here, but you can see the precision of the, the reflections. You've got reflections in the glass here and a nice fading out from the, the red to where you get a hot spot from the sun. So we didn't do too much to get this set up. A few tweaks and we could have a, a very nice render here. So again, if you go to adjust exposure uh, it's saying that we can't do it because we're not using Google Chrome or Firefox, but you can use those options afterwards. So now that we've got Revit 2012 installed, 
uh, with with the render options. Let's open up this advanced project again and see what we can do there. So now that this is open, I'm just going to bring these down a little bit so all we can see is our 3D views. So I've got a number of 3D views here, as you can see. And maybe this time I want to actually render all of them. So what I can do is come back to the view, sorry, not the view, I'm thinking 2013. In the online tab, you'll now have a render in cloud and a render gallery option. So if we hit the render in cloud, we should get that same dialog box that we saw previously. Oh, it's a little bit different. This is giving us a step-by-step -step process. I'll hit continue. And now you're seeing something similar to what we saw before. So the 3D view, let's say render all of them. Let's go to still images. We'll keep that the same. And we'll go with high image size, or sorry, high render quality. Use a large image size. And we'll turn this to JPEG. And we'll start to render. So as you can see, it's saying creating online render job. I'm signed in. And once this gets moving, we're going to start to see that circle spin again here. And over on our gallery, if I minimize this, we're going to see another uh, sample project um, category, essentially. It's going to create a category for our new renders. And we're going to see all these 3D views from that from this render project or this Revit project start to create. So it gives me a warning here and it says that these materials aren't mapped. Uh, that's okay, I could go back in and make those changes to map those out and we'd still get some nice renders but by the looks of it this is only going to show up as an unmapped material on interiors. So we'll say okay and let it do its thing and as you can see it's doing its thing in the background. If I come back over to here and just hit F5 to refresh we might see something something new one moment okay so it's still doing its thing but we would see this uh, this eventually will make its own category for another set of images so maybe next time we'll open up AutoCAD web server and we'll take a look at those renders and see how they turned out. Anyway, that's cloud rendering uh, with Autodesk 360. Hope you enjoyed. If uh, you're ever looking for more information from iDesign Solutions, you can come to iDesignSOL.com and visit our blog. We've got a number of different topics that we keep up to date on like Vex Robotics, uh, different AutoCAD software and tutorials. So if you're ever looking for a little more information, you can come and check out our blog. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. And if you're ever looking for maybe some online courses or some free events, we also host a number of those as well. So you can come to idesignsol.com forward slash events and see what's available to you. So as you can see, we've got a number of events coming up in December and January. And hopefully we'll see some of you there. Thanks for watching. This is Travis signing off.